Can I tell you a story? Okay. There was a young man. And this young man is um, maybe somebody that you might even be sitting somebody uh, sitting next to somebody like this young man right now, tonight. And this young man, he went to high school, he graduated. You know, um, he was smart. His grades didn't always show it, but he was a, he was a smart guy. Um, finished high school, did a handful of jobs, and he went to college, which was um, not a big deal in his family. It was kind of expected. You know, you go to college after high school. And... Uh, he did well enough, passed all of his classes, and he even played it safe. He played it safe. He majored in business. He got a, um, ah, you, all, you all chuckle. And he, he, minored, he even minored in finance, all right? So he's doing good. And he got, he interviewed, right? Went on Indeed.com, which if you're not familiar with yet, you will be very soon. And in any case, he goes on Indeed, Monster, etc. and he gets the interview, and he gets the job, and he gets a job as a financial, mm, sort of a financial manager, and so what these guys do is they go, and their company manages people's money, and the manager's job is to invest that money and do different things with it, and in his mind, he goes, I'm perfect for this because I will not lose a cent that I am entrusted with, and he makes that his goal. I will not fail at this endeavor. I will never lose any of this money. And so, day after day, he starts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, doesn't lose anything. He's like, oh, I'm doing good. First week, second week, third week, fourth week, month to month to month. And then he gets his first review, and he hasn't lost a dime, and he goes, I'm doing pretty good. Boss sits him down. He looks at him. Young man's pretty pleased with himself, just like Sebastian is here. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> love it. In any case, so he sits there, and he's <laughs> very pleased. Oh, prop. <laughs> and he's very pleased. And his boss looks at him and he says, um, I've been looking at your numbers and I want to let you know. And the young man thinks, oh, he's going to let me know I'm doing good. I'm going to let you know you have been doing very good. You kind of missed the mark, buddy. Because you see, um, you know what the goal of the job is, right? And the young man thinks, well, of course, don't lose any of the money. But the boss looks at him and he says, no, the, the goal of your job is to invest that money so it will grow. And I'm sorry, but it's not working out. We're going to have to let you go, and you're fired. He doesn't point. That'd be bad. But he says, you're fired. Open hand. Non-threatening. <laughs> you're not fired. You can stay, Sebastian. In any case, and the young man, he's confused and he's dismayed. And, um, and it's kind of a sad end to our tale because, you see, um, in his effort to not fail at anything, he had failed at his first job. Now, I tell you that story to lead into our talk tonight. You see, in our lives, uh, some of us have been entrusted with money, maybe like our young man, um, but all of us certainly have been given certain talents and gifts and abilities, and I would say been given those by God, and not so that we would just sit on them and not fail at anything, but instead that we would take those, invest in them, try new things, and grow in those gifts and abilities. And those gifts and abilities and that dream of putting them all together into something amazing, that, my friends, is what we're going to call calling. Everybody say calling. calling. Awesome. So tonight, our big question is this. Soma. Oh, slide. Yes. Thank you. How do, how do we discover our life's calling? That's our main question. If you have a notebook, a journal, a it's the phone, whatever, you, and you like to write things down, write this down. How do we discover our life's calling? How do you discover that thing that we all hope to have, right, that thing that maybe, hopefully, some of us will even get paid to do, that job that you love? I never worked a day in my life because I love what I did every day. You ever heard that before? I don't know if that exists. Comma, <laughs> calling, I think, does exist. Calling does exist. And in fact, finding what it is is tough, but I think the only way you find out what it is is discovering it. So how do we discover our life's calling? How do we discover that thing that we're sort of uniquely uh, built for and tuned into? Let's define calling real quick. Next slide, please. There we go, calling. So, and this is another thing you might want to write down. It says, the big vision that God has for your life, that's calling. So in your mind today, so when you're thinking, how do we discover my life's calling? That's the big vision that God has for your life. And I think this is a biblical definition because it's in the Bible. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, and it's going to be on the screens. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And it says this, for we are God's workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So for we are God's workmanship. That means we have been created. We've been sort of um, uniquely made. And then the second line, you know, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Um, this is for people who belong to Jesus, who say, I'm a Christian. If um, you know somebody who's not a Christian or if you're not somebody who's just checking it out for the first time tonight, no big deal. Principles still apply. Uh, but certainly, when you become a Christian, th- there's a certain um, awakening, a spark that happens where all of a sudden, bam, there's something that God really wants you to do, I'd say especially for the body of believers. But tonight, we're going to talk even bigger than that. We're God's workmanship, creating Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God has this big vision for our lives. God has a big vision for our lives. That's our calling. How do we find that calling? Big idea? Next slide. I love my slides. I, got, I went slide happy this week, guys. <laughs> Give a hand for slides. Yeah. There we go. Also, uh, Giselle, right? Thanks, Giselle. Also, give a hand for Giselle. There we go. She's rocking those slides. And here's our big idea. Awesome. We discover our life's calling by pursuing different things. And by different things, I mean a variety of things. By trying out different stuff. We discover our life's calling, the stuff we're good at, the thing we're, maybe the, the big vision, that thing we're supposed to do that God has put on our hearts and our minds, wired us for, given us uh, skills and abilities, um, a certain set of skills. Honey, stay on the line. Liam Neeson, taken. Anyway, we discover, <laughs> some of you are like, who's Liam Neeson? What is taken? And some of you are no longer in the college, but instead in the young adult category of so much. Anyway, because you're older. That was the joke. I'm sorry. Okay, that was dumb. <laughs> I told myself, I told myself I wouldn't, I wouldn't get goofy. My wife, she passed me, she goes, honey, you just preach from your heart. You get nervous, you get goofy, just preach from your heart, honey. And that's where her way of saying, like, don't tell jokes. <laughs> in any case, um, we pursue different Stuff. And so let me give you a couple of examples. Maybe you are a college person and you're living at home. This is my story. Started at Moore Park College, uh, Harvard on the Hill. Whoop. Now, Pierce people say that too, but we all know what's Moore Park. In any case, but um, go JCs. Um, so living at home, go to Moore Park, transfer to CSUN, okay? Big dreams. And, um, and some, of you, um, some of you are living at home, commuting to school. It's probably a, probably a lot of you. Am I right? If, if you're, okay, if you're living at home in community school, just nod your head silently. Okay. And if you um, are not, and instead you traveled here, then nod your head loudly. Ah, there we go. Awesome. And um, in any case, so yeah, my story was stayed at, like, lived at home, community school, got a degree, yada, yada, yada. Um, some of you might be in that sort of, like, camp, going to school, doing your thing, maybe you have a part-time job. What I'm saying is, what are you pursuing beyond that? Maybe you're, you've been playing it safe. You know, I'm kind of good at this. I know I need to go to college. Uh. Or maybe uh, you decided not to go to school, or you thought, oh, I could never do school. Oh, I was never that good. Um, but what are you trying that's uh, different, that adds variety, that's not just the same old, same old? Maybe you're serving a church. Maybe you are a uh, math major who also learns how to play guitar. Maybe you are um, somebody who works at Taco Bell and you have a blog on the side about uh, health and fitness. I don't know. Um, <laughs> those might be conflicting. Uh, drive through diet. Check it out. Our main passage tonight is... is Ecclesiastes, it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It's going to be verses 1 through 6. And so we're going to look at those verses right now and make our way through them. And I think um, we're going to find out what it says. So Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. And that's going to um, kind of give us, I would say, I think uh, God's principles for how we discover our calling. Awesome. Awesome. Flipping, scrolling, tapping. Beautiful. Good, good, good. Now, when I stumbled upon this passage, it was kind of recently. And in fact, um, initially when I was planning this talk, it was going to have two points, but this one got big, so it went down to one. And um, 
The other point I think whew, could almost be a series, comma, um, maybe Kelly want to preach it because it's going to be good, baby. <laughs> so, but um, no, but um, but we're gonna. So, uh, oh yeah, Ecclesiastes. Let's let me tell you about that. Um, so uh, uh, we're gonna read in the book of Ecclesiastes, and um, we oh gosh, the last sermon series was ask it right. What's the wise thing to do? Was that two series ago? Something like that? It was last year. Yeah, right? And, uh, oh gosh, uh, two weeks ago, Andy spoke the fear of the Lord, right? The beginning of wisdom is fearing God. If you guys were here, remember this? Okay, good. So Proverbs, I think of Proverbs like tweets or like something like uh, ins- inspirational you put on your Instagram. You know, like you're getting a sick curl and it's just like, no, oh gosh, no fear, no regrets or something stupid like that. <laughs> Um, ladies, I don't know what ladies do, put on Instagram. It's you, and there's, you're silhouetted, and your, aunt, your arms are raised. <laughs> and it just says, like, f- freedom to be. Or so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, in any case, in any case, I'm not good at Instagram, guys. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's good. So I would say Proverbs. Proverbs, honestly, if you read Proverbs, um, it's a ton of fun. Just go for it. And it's these it's short little sayings. Most of the time, it's all sayings and like kind of like tweets, okay? Ecclesiastes is more like a TED Talk you'd watch on YouTube, okay? Mm, you're like, Brene Brown changed my life. <laughs> In any case, if you haven't also, just a quick sidebar. If you haven't seen Brene's Brown talk on uh, like a TED Talk on YouTube, check it out. Not now, but later on. It's awesome. Um, In any case... In any case, so Ecclesiastes, it's this um, deeper dive into wisdom that when just a couple lines won't do. And the guy who wrote it, uh, most scholars think, is uh, a man named Solomon, who the Bible describes as the richest, wisest king who ever lived. People would travel, not just people, uh, rulers of other nations would travel from far and wide just to ask him questions. Hey, I have this going on in my nation. What do I do? How do I... uh, how do, I keep, how do I tax my people the right way? I don't know how to handle the law, whatever it is. He's also the richest guy in sort of, um, if you read, to read the Old Testament in the Bible, uh, the, the richest man who ever lived um, in the Old Testament as well. So he's a guy with unlimited resources, um, unlimited smarts, this massive understanding of life. And he has more time and money on his hands than anybody else uh, in the Old Testament. Because literally they're working, if they're in Israel, they're working six days a week. If they're not in Israel, they're working seven days a week. Typically what we would call working poor type jobs, agrarian existence, hard, short, mucky. But he can eat good food and sleep enough and just kind of can think about life and observe and do different things. So in any case, read Ecclesiastes. That's my, that's a big idea there. But Ecclesiastes 11, here we go. I'm going to read through it, going to explain it, going to pull some stuff out of it. Here we go. Ship your grain across the sea. After many days, you may receive a return. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. If clouds are full of water, they pour rain on the earth. Whether a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where it falls, there will it lie. Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Sow your seed in the morning, And at the evening, let your hands not be idle, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. Yes. So let's just pop through that again, so just so we have an understanding of everything. If you want to just put up that first slide, that'd be fabulous. Here we go. So cast your bread upon the waters, it might return to you, give portions of seven, yes to eight. So um, have you guys ever heard of this term, diversify? Yes, diversify your investments, because you don't know, one might do well, one might not do so well. Okay, so that's kind of a big idea of this whole passage, is diversify your stuff. In this case, this guy has grain. And in my version, it actually says, cast your grain upon the waters. And it's like, what does that even mean? Do I go down to like... Zuma and cast it upon the waters. No, it means like put grain on ships and send it out at, for trade purposes. So, in the old in the old world, um, and in many places in 
in the world today still. You trade goods um, and services. And we have currency here, so cold hard cash. And most of us don't even have cash anymore, right, Royal? You have a debit card. If you're smart, if you're I'm just going to free, free point, debt is dumb. Do not use a credit card. And anyway, so debit card. Okay. But this guy, he has grain. So he says, he has trade the grain. He goes, do seven things. No, not even just seven. Do eight things. Yes. Because you don't know if disaster is going to strike. You, there might be something that happens on the land. And then verse 3, he goes, If the clouds are full of water, they pour forth rain upon the earth. Whether a tree falls to the south or the north, where it falls, there you don't know. And basically, here's a big idea. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Can you just raise your hand and say, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Me neither, guys. You're in a safe place. You're among friends. Verse 4 is one type of person, is one type of person that this passage presents. And it's this kind of person. Whoever watches the wind, they won't plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. This type of person is somebody who says, I don't know, which we all admitted, well, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And they have a fear of the unknown, a fear of failure maybe, a uh, fear of people what? What people might think if they fail or if they try something and it looks stupid, right? So they say, I don't know. I will do nothing. So verse 4 is the first kind of person. I don't know. I will do nothing. We continue on. Verse 5, again, you don't know what the wind's going to happen. The mother, the mother's womb and how the child is formed, okay? And um, there's been, there's a, a, a movie called The Miracle of Life. Have you ever seen this? I saw it in public school. Yeah. And it's about how a child is formed in a mother's womb. Now, recommend? No. <laughs> Interesting? Yes. Traumatic? Potentially. Okay. <laughs> but still, it's this mystery. You don't know where the winds are going to go. You don't know how babies are born. You don't know what God's going to do. So again, I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows the future. Verse 6 is a different kind of person. Remember verse 4 guy? I don't know. I do nothing. Verse 6 is a different kind of person. Verse 6 is this. They sow their seed in the morning, and at night, their hands are not idle. Verse 6 person says, I don't know. I will do something, though. I will do anything. I will try a new thing. I'll do a thing. I don't know. So I better get after it. I better do something. Um, so how does this actually look? So it looks like... Uh, Maybe you're taking 18 units this semester. You guys starting school this week? Next up, boys. Boom, shakalaka. So it looks like this. It looks like this. It looks like this. You figure out your class schedule. You figure out, you know, your big rock stuff. What's the most important stuff? Getting your classes done. You have a relationship. You do that. Da, da, da. But um, maybe there's something else you wanted to pursue. And so, you know, you sow your seed in the morning. So you go to class, do your homework. But in that... Um, Gosh, I'm so busy. Just pray for my time management, please, in your life group that you're all going to say. Um, secret, secret, the secret weapon you all have is, uh, it's called scheduling and choice, okay? So, um, it's a secret weapon. Shh. Don't tell anybody. Let me tell you this. 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 And we'll get into some uh, more detailed application later, but this is just a preview of coming attractions. Um, imagine if you just even took one hour of your Netflix time every week. One hour. Just one of your... Also, as a fun thing, maybe count your Netflix hours every week. <laughs> That's free. Do it if you want. All right. And just applied it to anything productive. I, I'll bet you at the end of the semester, this would be a very productive semester. In any case, in any case, in any case, Two kinds of people. One person says, I don't know, and does nothing. Another person says, I don't know, I'm going to do something. And I have an illustration to demonstrate this. I need your help. You ready? Can you help me? Will you help me? Would you be willing to help me, Tim? Okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to involve standing and doing nothing. Is that okay? Thank you. Let's give a hand for our volunteers. All right. Now I'm going to rearrange you real quick. Okay. Um, 
I no no, that's fine. Your physical geopolitical satellite location, I'm gonna move. All right. So you're <laughs> GPS, guys. Whoa, geopolitical, man. <laughs> Geopositioning. Should you change that? Okay, perfect. Hey, okay, stand right here. Okay, good. And then you stand like right there, that's fine. And then you stay there, and you come like over here. Stop. All right. <laughs> Take a step forward. Take a step forward this way. No, 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 just no, no, you step that way a little bit. Perfect. Okay, and then everybody face face this direction. That way. And put your, put your hands out a little bit. Like this, put your hands out. Perfect. All right, so here's the deal. In life, we don't know. Yes, and you, hands up. Uh, High five. It's all good. <laughs> um, in life, we don't know what's going to happen. We oftentimes pray, God, show me the way. I pray this so much. What is my calling? What am I supposed to do in my life? And so we just want God to open our eyes and, and look out at life and see the roadblocks ahead and see, oh, I see exactly what I should do. Okay? In fact, here, take a step that way. Good, take a step. You, yeah, that way. No, no. More, 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 more. Perfect. Okay, so, I'm sorry. Anyway, but we want to, so we think life is like, perfect, I'll know what I'll do, I'll just tell, I'll see you. No, it's not that. Instead, you walk backwards, because you don't know, remember? We all raised it, we admitted it, I don't know. And so you start doing a thing, okay, and for me, I'll, I'll start. Um, oh gosh, what was my first part-time job? I was like a part-time karate instructor with little kids, like four-year-olds. My last name is Signs, Mr. Science. Oh. So I start, so I start. So I start, Mr. Science, and you put your hands out a little further. You're going to touch my, you're going to touch my elbow. You're right. <laughs> oh, here I go. So, and you start, you're like, I'm teaching karate. This is great. This is, this is great. You're fired. Oh, bummer. All right. So, well, that was fast. <laughs> you know, little kids, not so much. You know what I really like, though? Working with them youths at the church at Rocky Peak. And in fact, that was really cool. So I served Rocky Peak for a long time with middle school. Oh, my gosh. You know, that just wasn't quite right. So I'm going to do something else. And in fact, I did do something else. I went and I was a youth pastor for three and a half years in Moore Park. And that was pretty good, actually. Little kids, no. Rocky Peak, although I thought it would be awesome, I had to leave. But I'm over here now. That's cool. Okay, I'm going to try something else. And in fact, I was getting my education. So I was getting my master's. Oh, what am I doing? I was getting my master's degree the whole time uh, while I was doing that. And I'm like, oh, I see. I was like, oh, I love... I love students, and I love people. I can see this. And oh, but the master's degree is done, so it's time for something else. And now here I go. In any case, guys, stay still. All right, standing and still. Stilling. What's that? Stilling. You're awesome. Now here's the deal. I can look back, and I can clearly see like a road map, okay, in my, you see this? This is a, um, a bit obtuse, if you will, but just track with me, if you will. Um, you see, I have a road map, right? I was like, I'm going to teach little kids. Um, I love Jesus. I want to be a youth pastor. No, I want to do something else in ministry. I want to get my education. And I look back and go, oh, I should have been doing this the whole time. In fact, I should have been a middle school. I should have been like a youth pastor from the get-go. And But I can't see it until I look back. Does that make sense? You see this? Yeah? And I love you guys. Yeah, and give these people a hand. Sit down. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was fun. Now, I got that from one of my professors. Uh, his name's Gary McIntosh. Awesome guy. And he has great stories about failure. Woo! Um, here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. We're going to uh, talk about how to apply this right now. I have some, um, some steps for you guys to take. Um, but here's a couple of key questions as we get into this. And there's a slide. I think. Yeah, perfect. Key questions. How are you investing your time? And number two is, which fear is holding you back? Or maybe which fears even? What fears are holding you back? So how are you investing your time? And you just leave this slide up for a minute here. Um, how are you investing your time? That is, what small steps are you taking towards God's big vision for, for your life? Again, what's your life's calling? That's God's big vision for your life. God's big vision. What small steps are you taking for, uh, toward God's big vision in your life? How are you investing your time? Now, let me tell you, the first thing you might want to do, perfect, the first thing you might want to do is this. You may have a, um, a tug, a, an inkling, an interest in something that you're not currently doing. Again, 
you might be just doing your thing. You might have wanted, you may have wanted to pursue music at some point. Be like, no, I never have. You know, everyone said I was non-musical when I was a kid, so I just never tried. Maybe you could try now. Um, some of you may want. You, some of you may uh, have wanted to start writing. Uh, I want to write a book. I want to write a blog. Go for it. Some of you may have wanted to even just learn some random skill. I want to learn how to scuba dive. That just seems frivolous and dumb. It might not be. It might be part of your life's calling. You don't know until you try it. Okay. So how are you investing your time? How are you investing your time? The first thing I want you to think of is this: um, Have you just said it out loud? That interest, that leaning. That spark, that idea, have you said it out loud to yourself? Have you said it out loud to God? Just get real with yourself. Like, you know, I really want to do this thing, you know? Um, for me personally, my, my story is like a lot of ministry stuff. So that's my story. It may not be your story. Um, I started playing guitar when I was 17. And at the time, I thought, I'm basically dead. Um, and all the guitar players I know, they started when they were 11, and they're really good. Um, but started when I was 17. When I was 23, I got I, my first youth pastor position I got. One of the big deals, I could play guitar and sing and lead worship with my wife. That was like, and I couldn't even strum a G chord for, for six months or nine months. What I'm saying is, if I had been like, no, when I was a kid, no, I, my dad told me when I was a kid, I was not musical. I didn't want to pursue music. If I just listened to that, would never have done it, would never have gotten an opportunity. See what I'm saying? So what's that thing? Have you said it out loud? Number two, say it out loud to yourself, say it out loud to God. Number two is say it out loud to like a trusted friend, life group, any life group leaders in the house. I have some application for you in a second you might want to do. But um, say it out loud to them. And then the, the third application I have is this. And we're going to go to a couple slides. Now, I have some book recommendations. And not all of you are readers. In fact, probably just getting real, I'll bet some of you, actually most of you consider yourselves non-readers. And in fact, you actually might be a great reader. And if you apply this talk tonight, you may discover you're an excellent reader. In any case, come on, try it. Just try it. So let's uh, look at a slide here. Next. Perfect. Here's a great book. Easy read. Well written by a guy named John Acuff. If you put his name together, it looks like, like Jonah Cuff. And some people call him Jonah sometimes. But he wrote this book called Start. Okay? Again, easy read. And um, I'd highly recommend it. It's actionable. And it's pretty much what we're talking about tonight. Okay? It's this whole thing of what's holding you back, what's the thing you really want to do, and how can you get there? Okay? The next book I'll recommend is a book called The Power of Uniqueness. And it looks a lot less cool. But the content's great. Um, wifey and I both recommend this highly. And basically, um, if you've ever heard the old saying, you can do whatever you want to do. This book says, no, you can't. You can do what you've been gifted to do. Oh, that's powerful, isn't it? You're like, I'm in. I want to read it. So this is a great book. And it frees you from this whole thing of like, I should be able to do everything really well. No, you shouldn't. You should be able to do some things really, really well that God has put in you. That, that in fact, he's created you in Christ Jesus to do ahead of time, right? Remember Ephesians chapter 2? That big vision he has for your life. So maybe in your life groups this semester, next semester, or on your own, go through the books. Go through one of the books. Worth your time, definitely, okay? <clears throat> now, let's talk what's holding us back from implementing any of this. What's holding us back is fear, okay? Fear. And it could be fear of failure, fear of looking stupid. Um, honestly, for most of us, if we got real for a minute and really thought about it, um, got real before God about it, we would say that fear has a face, fear has a voice. And... We could fill in the blank, oh, um, what would dad think? What would my mom think? What would, what would my friends think? What would my life group think if I said this? Even if I just said out loud, I really want to pursue missions work. I really feel led to do a gap year and go, go to discipleship school. I really feel led to... Fill in the blank, okay? You fear that person, you fear that failure, you, feel that you fear that embarrassment, and you can't move forward. You can't move forward. 
I have a couple quotes to leave you with. First quote is this. It's by a guy named Aristotle. He's a philosopher. This is a great quote. There's only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. And in fact, that's what fear wants you to do. Fear what others think. Just sit, do nothing. Do nothing for the kingdom of God. Take no small step toward that big vision God has for your life. And then I, I love this quote, this next quote. This is from a guy named Oswald Chambers. He wrote a book called um, My Utmost for His Highest. Okay. <laughs> this is great. This is it's gold. The remarkable thing about God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. Oswald, you've done it again. So many of us are afraid to pursue a different thing, to start a new thing, to step out of ourselves. And the band's going to come up right now. We're so afraid to pursue that thing because we're afraid of what others will think. We're afraid of failure. What's on the other side of failure anyway? Uh, I look stupid maybe? I don't know, right? We're embarrassed. We're so afraid of that. There's a person, like in our passage today, who says, I don't know what to do. I will do nothing. I am afraid. Let's instead be people who say, I have a fear. You know what my my fear is? My fear is a fear of missing out. My fear is a a fear of missing out on what God has for me. My fear is that I will will be so concerned with what others think of me, what I think of myself, what my parents would say, all of that. I'm so concerned with that that I would miss out on what God has for me, this exciting life that God has. And my friends, all I'm saying is take a small step toward that big vision. Take a small step toward that big vision. Discover your life's calling by taking that small step. Try a new thing. Try a different thing. Go for it. And I'll tell you this. I promise you that if this semester, if everyone in this room committed to doing that together, and instead of in your groups, if somebody said, hey, guys, I really, you know, I was praying, and I really feel like God is asking me to pursue this thing that's completely outside of my character, right, Um, that you've never known that I've wanted to do this thing before, don't laugh at that person. Don't even ask, how are you going to do that, man? The first thing you should, you should say is, is, wow. That's amazing that God has put that in your heart and put that on your mind, giving you that burden. What if this group was that kind of a group, that in your life groups you could get real with one another, okay? What if when a new person came in, when a new person came in, that was one of the marks of what made this place so attractive, is, wow, those people are really going for it. Those people are really going for it. They're not stuck. That'd be amazing. I don't think anybody would want to stay away from that. I think people would love it. So let's pray real quick. Father, I ask that we would not be concerned with the fear of what others think of us, God. Father, I ask that we would have a holy fear of you, God. Lord, that we would know that you are pleased with us, that you love us. You sent your only son for us. That when we fear you, God, it is a a perfectly right respect that we would have, God. We would have a fear of missing out on the, the big vision you have for our lives, Lord. We would take a small step together toward that vision. And as we worship tonight, God, we, I ask that you would uh, bring things to mind that we would we'd even pray for. God, I ask that we would even um, tonight say those things out loud to you, to ourselves. Lord, I ask that tonight we'd say those things out loud to a friend. Lord, I ask that tonight we would go to the back prayer corner, God. We would, we would say those things out loud. We would pray about those things with the people at the prayer corner. God, that even if we don't have the words yet, even if we just go, I have this sense that God wants me to pursue, it's... I don't know exactly what it is yet, God. I feel, like, I feel like you want me to travel. I feel like you want me to do missions, God. I feel like you want me to, um, to go back to school to pursue this thing, God. Whatever it is, I ask that we would take a small step toward that big vision tonight, that we would not be afraid to get out of our comfort zone, that we would not fear failure. Amen.